Hey brewers, it's Paul here and today we're going to take a look at how to bottle your beer. We're going to go over different types of bottles that you can use, plastic, glass, swing top, different capper options as well. We'll show you how to bottle directly out of a fermenter, out of a bottling bucket and using an auto siphon. So first things first, as usual, you want to make sure your bottles are clean and sanitized. I soaked this with some Diversol, that pink powder, rinsed it, then hit them with some star sand. Quick tip here. When you're sanitizing them, you can buy this thing called a monster cleaner. Put in your no rinse sanitizer. So you can see it gets it all over the inside of your bottle with just one quick squirt. And then you can put it on something like a bottle tree for it to, to drip all out. Alternatively, you could get a box, line it with some clean towels and just have them all in the box like that. So first, if you have a fermenter that has a spigot, it doesn't have to be a fancy stainless steel thing, just anything with a spigot, and you want to bottle your beer directly out of it, you have two options. Number one is adding priming sugar to the fermenter. The problem with that is you have to stir it in. You're going to stir up all the sediment from the bottom. So what I would do instead, you can get carbonation drops. We sell uh, the Cooper's brand, but I know there's a few different brands out there. And these are basically just sugar pills. They kind of look like cough drops. And depending on the size of your bottle, one will do a standard like 355 ml bottle, like the one I first washed there. Or if you're using a bigger bottle, like the 740 ml, you'd put in two. If you're doing something in between, like a 500 ml bottle, you can break these carb drops in half pretty easily by just pushing on them with like a, a butter knife. Make sure you take off your airlock. If you do not, as soon as you go to pour the, the beer out, it's gonna suck the liquid out of your airlock and into your beer. One thing else I'll mention is uh, bottle filler. They're like five bucks. There's no reason you don't own one of these. It allows you to perfectly fill your bottles all the way to where they need to be. And also you can uh, switch between bottles without having to turn the spigot off and on. So go ahead and do that. And then as you can see, there's no beer coming out. But as soon as I push the tongue in on the bottom, it starts to flow. So it'll fill up the bottle, and then as you can see, <clears throat> once I stop pushing down on that black tongue there, it'll stop the flow. And you'll wanna let it fill all the way to the top because it's designed so that when you take out the bottle filler, it'll leave the exact perfect amount of headspace, and that's important. If it's filled up all the way, it's not gonna carbonate properly. And the nice thing with these plastic bottles is that you don't require a capper. They just have caps that screw on. You want to make sure they're really tight. If not, while the CO2 is being produced, instead of it carbonating your beer, it's going to escape through the cap. Do a glass bottle. The plastic bottles you get at a homebrew shop are going to be food grade. You don't have to worry about it you know, giving any weird flavors to your beer or anything like that, it's totally fine. I've used them a bunch, especially if I'm sending beers into a competition. I'd rather send plastic than glass through the mail. We have two types of cappers here, a bench capper and a hand capper. So I'll show you the hand capper first. Usually they're magnetic, so it'll hold your cap for you. You wanna get it centered and then push down with equal force with your left and right hand. And that's it, it's capped. Okay, so let's say you, you're fermenting in like a pail or something that doesn't have a spigot, you're gonna wanna rack it into something like a bottling bucket. And to do that, I would use an auto siphon. And for your tubing, you wanna make sure you have enough to reach the bottom of your pail. You don't want it to splash. Keep in mind, you're gonna be plunging this thing as well, so. It's always good to have a little bit extra tubing than not enough. So for our priming solution, I boiled a cup of water and then added in around four and a half ounces of dextrose. Uh, that's appropriate amount for about a 19 liter batch size. If you're doing more or less, just Google priming sugar calculator. There's a whole bunch of calculators out there. You basically tell it how much beer you want to bottle, how fizzy you want it. I usually do around 2.5 volumes of CO2, and it'll tell you how much uh, dextrose to use. You could also use table sugar, dry malt extract. Just from my experience, dextrose seems to carbonate a little bit faster. It's nice and cheap, it's easy to get. So you'll add that into your bottling bucket first. 
and then rack the beer on top. That way the beer is mixing with the priming solution as you're transferring it. Another handy accessory are these auto siphon clips here. So it'll hold that to the side of your fermenter so it leaves your hands free, just like that. And I usually start siphoning from about here. You don't want to jam this all the way to the bottom. It'll start picking up the sludge. So as the beer is getting siphoned, you can just lower it. And then once you see some uh, trouber or whatnot getting in there, you can uh, pull it out. So again, we're making sure we're at the bottom of our bottling bucket. Okay, we're starting to pick up some troops. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop the siphon. This out of the way here. So at this point, the priming solution should be pretty well mixed in, but take a clean and sanitized spoon and you just want to gently stir it just to make sure the priming sugar is evenly distributed. So just very gentle. You don't want to oxygenate your beer at this point. That should do it. So I'm going to go grab our bottle filler. Go ahead and fill this. Again, all the way to the top, and then it'll leave just the perfect headspace there. And then, if I'm bottling beer and I'm not using plastic bottles, I much prefer using a bench capper. Uh, if you brew a lot, it's definitely worth spending a little bit of money over the, the uh, more simple hand cappers like these. And look for one that you can easily adjust the height, especially if you have different size bottles. Like this guy here, to adjust the height, you just have to push on a button and slide it up or down. So it makes it easy if you have different bottle heights to, uh, to adjust for them. And then just push down on the lever. It caps it real quick. Some bench cappers use like a screw mechanism to move it up and down. It's a real pain in the butt. I would avoid those. And one last type of bottle are swing top bottles, uh, kind of like what Grolsch uses. These are nice and convenient. You won't need a capper to, to cap these bottles. However, they are more expensive, but they're made of really thick glass and they should last you forever. Uh, the only thing is once in a while you'll have to replace the rubber gasket, but they're like 10 cents a piece. And then to cap it's real easy, just put the cap on, push down, and that's it. So that's basically the overview of how to bottle your beer. We went through different ways to cap your beers, different types of bottles you can use. Uh, if you have any more questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more content like this. Cheers.